She is one of the most familiar faces in race car driving, and she certainly didn't get there by listening to anybody who said no. Roll it. Born and raised in the Midwest, Danica was very athletic. She was a standout baseball player and a cheerleader. But by age 10, she caught the racing bug and never looked back. She started small with go-karts, and she flew away the competition. But to achieve her dream, she'd have to leave home. Danica dropped out of high school at 16 and moved to England to pursue her passion full-time. The rest is racing history. Please welcome Danica Patrick! A standing O. Hi. Hi, how's it going? Good. Yes, this is yours. I uh I don't know if you play with Hot Wheels anymore. By the way, thanks for the standing ovation. That's very nice. By the way, thanks. Good last last interview send off for the winter on for me. Uh anyway, uh, it's, uh I don't know if you play with Hot Wheels anymore, if you know anybody that plays with Hot Wheels, but this is my uh Dana car. It's uh Hot Wheels design Sega car. It's the car that uh that I drive in the uh, in the in the game. I love this. And if there's anything that'll get a guy to play with a little car, it's Danica Patrick. <laughs> Thank you for wearing an appropriate outfit okay. from a race car driver, Go Daddy Star. <laughs> Something sexy, you know, is this... I thought, you know, it's my last day of interviews for the year, and I thought, I'm going to L.A. I had to do, we did, uh, I was with Sega in New York last week. Of course, it was freezing cold. It snowed a little at one point. And so I'm like, I'm coming to L.A., and it's so much warmer than ever else it seems like. But, of course, today it's cold, and I'm freezing outside. <laughs> yeah, you were a trooper to get out there in that car. That's okay. So, talk to me about, you know, we talked about today's show about people who odds were saying don't do it. What, growing up, I mean, still today, race car driving, even when Elio Castroneves was on the other day, it was like he put you in a parent th in a parenthesis, like, well, yes, there are some women. It, so nothing about your childhood would have led you to thinking that race car driving is where you should go. Mm, uh, no, I don't. I don't know if. Uh, I mean, there's a little background in my family. My dad used to race. My mom and dad met in racing, actually. Um, so I guess there's that. But you know, especially being a girl, uh, I don't think it's normal to think that you're going to drive race cars. And it's. I don't think it's normal in general to think you're going to drive race cars because it's not something that you play in school. It's not basketball. It's not baseball. It's, uh, it's none of those things. So they don't just happen naturally. They cost a lot of money, and they, you know, they're they're an odd activity. So, you know, putting that in perspective and being a girl, I mean, I think it's, uh, I think it's, you know, it's not something you think would happen. How does it happen? Where where is the point where somebody says, you know what, you can maybe do this for <laughs> real and make a living? Well, I think it might have started with me. I mean, I, I know that my first year racing go karts, I decided that I was going to go to college for engineering so I could learn how to work on my race cars and race forever. <laughs> I don't think I really thought it was about what that looked like, but I learned that I don't have to do that. So, um, so I went to I went to college a little early. How old are you here in this shop? Um, I am probably 16. Um, that's in England. And that was probably when I went over uh, in 1998. I think that might be a 98 behind the, my knee right there. Um, I went over there and drove a car for the first time to see if I liked it, see how it went. And um, uh, I went back at the end of that year and did uh, did, a, did a race and then did full-time in 99, 2000 and came home in 1901. So was that around the time when you said, was there that moment when you said, this is it? There is no, there's no plan. To yeah, I, when I when I when I left high school at 16, um, I left halfway through my junior year. You have to be 16 to leave, and um, so I, I was. So the second you could get out, you were out. Duh. <laughs> um, no duh. Yeah, uh, it was very exciting to me to be able to like move away from home and not go to school anymore. But more than anything, be able to race. I mean, that was that was perfect. But it was definitely one of those things that was a turning point where it went, okay, I better be really serious about this because I'm leaving high school. And I'm, and GED's great, and I have it, but I don't, it's not the same as going to kids as graduating high right. school and getting into college and going on and things like that. So uh, it became something that was like, you know. Once you pulled your no own safety back. net out. Yeah, yeah that was kind of the only time I thought to myself, okay, I've got to make this work. It wasn't that I didn't think it was going to. It was just a, a little aha moment of like, okay, here we go.
Emilio Castroneves was on uh, yeah. recently, yeah. and we were talking about this brotherhood and sisterhood of, of race car drivers, which is, to me, what fascinates me is that you guys, when if an accident happens, mm -hmm. there is such camaraderie and solidarity. Yeah. But if you mess with somebody on the track, you guys beat each other up. Yeah, I think that you all, you, you understand and respect that there's a danger level, and no matter what, you don't want anybody to get hurt. I mean, everybody, you watch racing. If anybody do, well, I want to see a crash. But you don't want to see somebody get hurt. You know, you wanna you wanna be excited, but you don't wanna you don't wanna see that. And we don't wanna see that either. And I think there's a realization that that it could happen to you, and it could be you. So. Um, but then on the track, yeah, if somebody's messing with you, you have to mess back. Yeah, you have to. In, and your instinct, even when we have the go-karts out there, I jokingly, before we started, said, I'm going to take you out at that wall. And she goes, no, I'm going to take you out at this first curve. Like, <laughs> that your, happens before that, so. Is your instinct... <laughs> Is that but just... you had some good bottom end, and you pulled away pretty well. I was going to have to spin you out on the right rear, but I didn't. <laughs> So I let the corner be my guide. You know, I I I had the inside line coming up coming up the. So up you the were never garage. even concerned, even for fun, that there was any chance I would get there before you. The only chance, only thing I was worried about was my was my heel slipping on the brake pedal and crashing in some way because my foot slipped off because I'm I'm clearly not wearing racing shoes and they are not those. So I think I you had an upper hand in some way to be able to work the pedals a little bit more efficiently and accurately. Yes, with my beautiful green shoes. They are on okay. the tigers. Yes. So what I'm getting at is you are a competitive person always. Yes. Yes. I would imagine you are too. I mean, you're successful. Aren't you competitive? I'm competitive, but one thing I'm, I'm learning about you in this moment is I'm. All, this is the image I've had of you. Okay. Sexy race car driver that okay. takes no grief. Right? You won't suffer a cool ever. Right. But talking to you before the show, you're really charming uh -huh. and, and open. Uh -huh. Is that a misconception people yeah. have? Yeah. I don't smile enough, so people probably think I'm moody and not nice. And I sometimes I'm not nice. Um, that is true. But uh, I'm I'm a little more lighthearted than maybe people would think. So I, I mean, I, I like to joke around a little, more, a little bit more. And people, you know, most people see me. You know, millions of people that that watch racing. I mean, that's. You watch me on the race weekends. You watch me at my job. You watch me intense and serious, and um, you know it doesn't always show me in the only light that I, you know that shows me in only one light. And there's another side of me too that's much less serious. And is that I still don't smile a ton, but it's much less serious than at the track. But but is that in your business where sponsorship is everything? Yeah. Is it better to be the tough vixen, or do you think you could benefit a little by being? Oh, hey, it's Danica. There's that smile. No question. I mean, this is something I fight in my head all the time because I'm naturally not maybe bubbly. Um, so, uh, you know, people do tell me to smile. And I think that it, it is important. People want to see smiles. They are, you're, they're invited in and they, I know that I've been told I'm not approachable. Because, That's the key. Yeah, and so yeah. it's important to be approachable and relatable and it's, there's a softness to that. And so, maybe yeah, I should do it like this. There's a softness to that. Um, it comes across different, though, doesn't it, when you're smiling? No, because I, did, I didn't buy that at all. <laughs> That's just like, like an annoyed race car driver. Okay, um, you also... So important. I, I think smiling goes a lot, a lot further than the other one, although the other one can make a, a splash in the news, for sure. Well, smile about this, because this, you, you've latched on to something yeah. amazing here with Sega. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, they asked me this year if I wanted to uh, wanted to be a part of this and be in the game, so I think I'm on the back here, and yeah, there I am. <laughs> um, so, I am... Um, I'm a character in the game. It is me. It is a better version of me. I think I I have no wrinkles. Um, you know, my skin is perfect. My hair is perfect all the time. Um, and I'm smiling probably, although it is my voice, so I'm sure you're going to get some kind of, you know, you're going to definitely get that racer in me. What is that um, like, though, to see yourself in a game? Uh, you know, cool. I mean, it's cool because you, you grow, you, when you're a kid, you play games, and especially something like Sonic, who's is such, an, such an iconic uh, character, um, so to be, to be someone that kids are playing now is, you know, they're going to have that memory, and that's, that's, that's really cool. I, I mean, there's nothing like, I don't know if you experienced this too, but there's nothing like kids that cheer up your day. You know, they, when you, you can have, you can be having a, a really crappy day, and you come across some kids that are excited to meet you, and they're just so pure, and they don't care, and, 
you know, they just make you smile, and so um, kids are kids are great. And so this was this was a neat opportunity. Well, thanks to Sega and Danica, everybody in the audience is going to go home with a copy of the new game because that's what you do on talk shows. You always give away everything to the audience. Up next, what is it like when you crash a race car at 200 miles per hour? Scary thought. We'll talk about it when we come back. Want more from the Jeff Broke Show? Get exclusive behind-the-scenes footage and watch your favorite moments from the show whenever you want at jeffbrokes.com. sitting here. So what is that? I mean, you're, you're, you're a person with friends and family and all of this, and yet your sport, as you yeah. said, people love to see crashes. Yeah. But, but we like them just because they're cool to see. But then when you, you're sitting here and you win that car, A, what's it like to go through? You're in the car, you see it coming. Can you react? Does your brain know, oh man, this is going to be bad? Uh, <clears throat> yep, uh, you do think that. <laughs> yeah, I do think that. I mean, there's always a thought that this is going to hurt. I mean, that can always go through my mind. And I usually close my eyes before I get there. Like, I let go and I just don't like that. Um, and, but it, it's, it's, part of the, it's part of the job. Is that what you do, really? You yeah. see the wall. Yeah. You think this is going to hurt. Yeah. You take it and you yeah. really do this going. I can well, move. Well, touch it, but, you know, you definitely kind of move around a little bit. So, I mean, that rack, I hit my foot pretty hard. It actually went past the clutch pedal and came back into it. So my foot was bruised and my arm had a big bruise. It's actually still there. It's like this, it's all scar tissue in there. It's crazy yeah. that you only have a bruise after that. Back in the old days, people did get hurt a lot more, and I'm glad I'm not in those days. But you know, it's not it's not beyond people um, people having fatal accidents. It happens. My last IndyCar race um, in 2011 last year was ended in a fatal accident. So um, you know, it does happen. I'm gonna take a hard left turn. <laughs> We're going to play a little game called Factor Fiction. Good, I turned left a lot, so. Factor Fiction, this is what, this is a little, a little for us to try to figure out true or false about Danica, from what we know about her, what we've read about her, what we're gleaning from uh, her today. I'm kind of curious Gleam. to hear what you say, so I might wait until I hear your answer. All right. What do I hear your answer? True or false, you are a Twi Hard fan. In other words, a gigantic <laughs> Twilight fan. What's the vibe from this race card? Yes or no? True. No. False. Well, we're pretty mixed. I'm yeah. Gonna say, okay. Think? I'm going to say absolutely not because you don't have time for it. It's kind of silly. I'm a race car That's driver, a and I'm in a I'm in a Sega game. What the hell do I need with Twilight? That's what I think. True or false? In the land of fiction, which is vampire world, it is true. I'm a Twilight. Okay. I'm all for one. Okay, you, this is great. Is Danica a backseat driver? Oh, yes! It's got to be yes. It's got to be. All day she's got to You gotta could say no because I'm also a front seat driver, too. If I'm in the passenger seat in the front, you name it, I'm, I am it. I am. I'm, in fact, I'm a, I'm a backseat driver in the driver's seat. I, like to, I, am, I am the most probably annoying person to ride with because... It's me driving down the road going, oh, come on, come on, be brave, let's go, get out there, come on, what are you doing? I'm like, this guy, get out of the left lane. I mean, it's like, you you get annoyed by, like, you know, three miles down the road, but, yeah. You are. I'm a backseat driver. Okay. Um, true or false, you're in talks with Dancing with the Stars. There is, I'm going to answer this, no chance Danica Patrick's going to do Dancing with the Stars because... 
But she can't win. She won't, people, she won't smile. She said, hey, hey, I did really good. True or false? Boss. You got one right. Okay. I am not, no, no thank you, no ma'am, no sir. Okay. All right, I'm one for three. I am All definitely right. not happy enough for that show. We That's why Elio, Elio is perfect, because he is like this all the time. Yes. <laughs> I'm like this. Last one. Elio. True or false, you suffer from acrophobia, and that is heights? There's, okay, yes or no? Yes, she drives 200 miles an hour in the walls. But I have low CG, which stands for center of gravity. All right, I'm going to go against the, I'm going to go with the audience. I'm going to say yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I scared death of heights. I did really? a little bungee jumping though in New Zealand. That was like my yes. grave. I just have to do it moment. I had to do it. Um, was it scary? And I just closed my eyes and said, if I die, I'm going to die doing a swan dive. <laughs> that is crazy. Crazy that you're afraid of heights. Yeah. All right, so everybody's going home with Sega. I've got a Hot Wheel with Danica on it that I'm going to give to my brother Scott because he loves you. And uh, up next, more out of the comfort zone, because that's really what Danica did. She paved the way for other women by saying, I'm doing it, like it or not. We're going to meet a guy who decided to videotape 100 days of rejection and post it online. He was trying to just get over the fear of being rejected, and it's catching on, and people around the world are talking about it. He's up next. This one's a little bit risky. I'm going to ask someone.